In this video, I wanted to give a little bit of an update on some of my thoughts on the Berean Standard Bible. Someone was asking me about this again recently, and uh, it was interesting. I happened to notice yesterday that Mark Ward, who I've had on my channel before, had a video that came out called Does the NRSV UE, the updated edition of the NRSV, Compromise on Homosexuality? And in that video, he actually praises the Berean Study Bible for its translation in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. And he actually calls the translation that they utilize at the end of this verse a translation touchdown. And sticking with the football analogy, comparing that with the NRSV updated edition, he says that the NRSV, basically the translators are laying on the ground forfeiting. Uh, because of how they handled that specific passage. So as I said, someone was asking me about this translation the other day. They wanted to know what my thoughts are now that it's been about a year or so since I've first looked at it, I guess. And they just wondered if I have any more thoughts on it, if I've developed in some of my thinking on it. And honestly, I haven't really read through it. I, I really haven't looked at it much since I first got it. I will say, though, that um, I really have a lot of the same thoughts as I did at the beginning because I did look through it some and got a feel for the translation. I understand where the translation is coming from, the translation philosophy and approach, and it really is kind of something that is more of a modern feel to it, more in between a word-for-word -word and thought-for-thought, -thought, kind of that mediating translation approach, similar maybe to the CSB, which I like a lot. But it is more, I would say, on the traditional side of things. And there are even renderings in there, as I pointed out before, that are really just renderings that have been around in English for a long time. So the beginning of Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now that's always been to me kind of a something that doesn't sit real well with me because they say at the beginning of the Bible, the print copy that I have, that this is a completely new translation. And I understand what they're saying. It is new. They're not really saying we're, we're just taking this particular translation and updating it. On the other hand, to say it's completely new, but then clearly they are borrowing a lot of phrasing, I would say, from, from other translations. I don't know. I don't know that I would call it completely new, and yet I understand the difficulty there is to, you know, how do you really portray the work that you're doing. I guess what I'm saying is I've never been convinced that they just went back to the original languages with the BSB and started from scratch. I guess no translators do that, if, if we're honest. But it seems to me that a lot of translation approaches and, and committees that have worked on translations have tried to take more of a fresh approach and say, okay, we're going to start with the original languages and then we'll let other translations inform what we're doing. I've always gotten the sense with the BSB that they were kind of taking existing translations and really being heavily influenced by those in terms of how they looked at the original language. So I don't know really what they were starting with, but again, when I look at passages like Psalm 23, and I see the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm just not really understanding what their approach was. It sounds to me like they're starting with the King James Version <laughs> rather than the original languages. So I know I'm sounding very negative about the translation and saying some of these things. I don't mean to be. I actually think when you look at it in and of itself, there are a lot of great things about it. And I can understand why people like it because it is very readable and it maintains a lot of those traditional renderings that a lot of people are familiar, familiar with and they really like. So I totally get it. I think there's a lot of good things to be said. A couple of things that I will say that I really do like about it, kind of an update on my thoughts here. One has to do with the name of the Berean Study Bible. So the name Berean Study Bible has caused a lot of confusion because Study Bible to most people denotes that it's gonna have a lot of study notes in it. But the Berean Study Bible is really just the Bible that is more of, like I said, that mediating translation approach. And they call it the Berean Study Bible. Well, 
the Berean Study Bible Group actually changed their name to the Berean Standard Bible Group. And from what I've heard, I believe that that is what the translation is going to be called going forward. Now, I haven't seen any, anything official about this. Someone could maybe tell me in the comments how official that is. If you look at the website for the Berean Study Bible, you'll notice here in the translation tiers, the Berean translations, they still have Berean Study Bible here. It's also on their website. Their logo says Berean Study Bible. But they do, as I said in a previous video, have various translations in their ecosystem. So they have the literal Bible, the interlinear Bible, the annotated Bible. But here, that mediating translation is still called the Berean Study Bible. So maybe that will be updated and changed. I think if they do change it to Berean Standard Bible, it would be less confusing, and that would be a positive development. The other thing I really like about the Berean Study Bible is their licensing uh, approach. It says, we desire to share a Bible text that is as free as possible from licensing and publishing constraints. While a copyright is necessary to ensure that there are not multiple forms of the same version, the project is constructed to enable royalty-free publishing of digital resources and generous licensing for use in print. So what they're really saying there is that they freely license this. They have a very gen generous licensing policy when it comes to the use of their translation. I think that's very refreshing and wonderful because there are issues today in the world that we live in with a lot of strict copyright laws and it's easy to have copyright infringement when you're using a copyrighted text. So having an approach like this that says you can freely use our text and we're going to give generous permissions for the use of our translation I think is, is really wonderful. I know of one person who has a ministry where he memorizes scripture and he was talking to me about the difficulties of how do you present scripture in lengthy formats at different churches and ministries and online if you're trying to use a translation that has strict copyright protections. So it's really helpful to someone like that to have something like the Berean Study Bible that is so free with its licensing policy, so generous with its licensing. So that is a really refreshing and helpful, wonderful, edifying thing for the body of Christ. So for that reason alone, I would say this translation has something really going for it. The NET is another translation. The New English translation also has very generous licensing from what I understand. But that's not as a traditional translation. The renderings in that are a little bit more unique and things that we're not used to hearing. Although that has its advantages too. So now we have, I would say, two translations that I know of that are very free in their licensing, the NET and the BSB, one less traditional and the other more traditional. So if you like that more traditional sound, I think the BSB really fits that bill. I will say too that the Berean Standard Bible or the Berean Study Bible, whatever they're going to call it, has a very avid following to it. When it came on the scene, a lot of people really... Uh, really, really like the approach that this team was taking to Bible translation. And so uh, that group that I showed earlier on Facebook, they, uh, they're really gung-ho about this translation and have a lot of great things to say about it. But like with a lot of things, some of the advantages also lead to some of the disadvantages. So I think because it is kind of such a homegrown project or not a lot of uh, money was invested, into the project. It does allow for freer licensing of the Berean Standard Bible. On the other hand, there are not as many resources available in print form for this Bible because, again, uh, not a lot of money. There's no major publisher behind this project, so they don't have a lot of print editions available. They do have print editions available. You can purchase them, but just not a lot of variety. But those are my updated thoughts on the Brian Standard or Brian Study Bible. I have no idea what to call it now. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. It's always great to hear different perspectives. But thank you so much for taking some time to listen to this subject. 
brought to you from a fresh perspective.